glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Capps. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. We're going to be talking about today and maybe uh, another time or two, another broadcast or two, we're going to be talking about the dominion principle. Well, someone said, what do you mean, dominion principle? Well, it comes from the Bible. Uh, you go to Genesis. You don't have to go very far. Do you find out that God said, let us make man in, in our uh, likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing. Psalms 8 says, over all the work of their hands. Now, that's found right here in, in Genesis in verse 26 through 28. God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let them have dominion over what? Over all the earth, in other words. In other words, God gave mankind a lease on this planet, and we're to have dominion over it. He leased it out to mankind. And if you want to read about the lease, Jesus talked about it in Mark, the 12th chapter. He said a man uh, planted a vineyard and hedged it about, let it out or leased it out to a husbandman. And when you read that, you realize from what is said in Genesis, what he says there, that God's going to take back this planet one of these days and things are going to change here. But I want to get right into it because uh, go, go with me to the Genesis, the 8th chapter. And uh, these are some of the foundation scriptures. In the eighth chapter of Genesis, after Noah had come out of the ark, here's what the Lord said. Uh, in verse 21, we'll start, And the Lord smelled the sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, uh, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every th living thing as I have done, while the earth remaineth. Now here's the one I want you to get a hold of. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. In other words, as long as the earth is here, and when you get into the scriptures, it reveals that the world will be here forever. As long as the earth remaineth, there will be cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, seed time and harvest. So we're talking about a planet that is under the law of God of seed time and harvest. That's just simply the way it works. You sow a seed and you reap a harvest. So we're going to be talking about the dominion principle, and I believe it'll help you understand some things. Now go with me, if you have your Bible, over to the Isaiah. In Isaiah, the 55th chapter, we begin reading here with verse, uh, well, let's start with verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Now notice who he's talking to. He's talking to the wicked here. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. Uh, your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, if you're not careful in, in reading this, you'll think <laughs> that he's talking about, well, you just can't operate in my ways. You can't think as high as I think. But now, remember who he's talking to. He's talking to the wicked here in the context of this scripture. Let the wicked forsake his ways and let the unrighteous man forsake his thoughts. For the wicked man's thoughts are not God's thoughts, neither are, are the unrighteous man's thoughts God's thoughts. For his ways are higher than the heavens are above the earth. But now, verse 10. Now this applies to us today here. For as the rain cometh down, and snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it to bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be 
that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I have sent it. Now, notice what he has said here. As the rain comes down from heaven. Now, we can understand that. You know, God never made anything hard. It's religion that got it <laughs> squirreled up to where it's hard to understand. Jesus never made anything hard. The laws that govern the world of the Spirit have been extended into the earth. And if you understand how the earth and the law of seed time and harvest works, you can understand how to operate in the principles of the kingdom. So here he says, the rain comes down and snow from heaven. Now we can understand that. It waters the earth and it really, it forces it to produce. Now, you know, you can have uh, all kinds of good seed in dry soil and it will not produce anything. The reason is there's not enough moisture not enough moisture to cause it to come up, sprout, and give life to it. That seed must have soil, it must have moisture, and it must have light to produce. So what God is giving us here is the way that it works here on the earth. As rain and snow comes from heaven, we can understand it, waters the ground, causes it to produce. And in the years that you have drought, it produces very little. In fact, sometimes you can't even give a crop up. Now, I farmed for 29 years before I went into the ministry, and I understand that. We've gone through that over and over again, that, man, I prayed for rain. I, I'd pray for rain and turn the radio on and turn it just a little bit off the station where you could get all the static when it lightened somewhere to just try to find out if it had lightened anywhere around that might produce some rain. Well, when you understand what God is saying here, the earth won't produce. The soil, the ground, will not produce unless it has water. Now, he is giving us some insight here into the fact that uh, what Jesus taught in Mark, the fourth chapter, will give you greater understanding of this, and we're going to go to it in just a little bit, but I wanted to get this foundation laid first, what God is revealing here that rain comes from heaven, it waters the earth, and the earth has no choice but to produce when the, the soil is watered. Whatever is in the soil, whatever seed is in the soil, must come up when it gets the right amount of moisture and gets the right depth, it is forced to produce. But now what I started out to say is out in the great southwest, uh, in the desert area out there. There's good seed in the ground out there. Seeds that have been there for thousands of years. Some of them may be so far under the sand that they never get wet. And besides that, they have to be close to the top of the ground before they will sprout and come up because they have to have enough heat from the sun and enough moisture to cause life to spring forth from that seed. Now that seed in that dry desert is good, but they do not have enough moisture to cause it to produce. But now, if you get a thunderstorm out there, in about three days you're going to see all kinds of green stuff coming up in that desert. The seeds are there, the seed are good, but the problem is not enough moisture to cause it to produce. So he said, as the rain and snow comes from heaven, waters the earth, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. In other words, this word, this book, the Bible, has the word of God in it, and this word, it acts as water to a dry, thirsty land. In other words, when you get into the, the book of Mark, the parable of the sower, the soil the heart of man is the soil in the book of Mark. There in the fourth chapter, the, the heart of man is the soil, and the seed is the word of God. Now you can see the analogy that he starts with here, and Jesus picks up on it and shows us how to operate in the kingdom of God. It's just as if the rain and snow comes from heaven. God's word that he sent to us in word form will water your desert and cause it to produce. <laughs> now, some, someone said, well, you know, I just don't understand all I know about the Word of God. Now, water in the Word, the Word is spoken of as water. 
Paul said, by the washing of the water of the Word. And uh, he said, I planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. See, you could have a knowledge, a certain amount of knowledge of the Word of God, but not have enough understanding of it to get it to work in your life. In other words, you've got the seed. The seed is incorruptible. Peter tells us that, that the, the Word of God is incorruptible seed. In other words, it, it cannot be corrupted in any form. It is good. That seed is good. But if it's on the inside of you and, and you don't have enough understanding of it, you don't have enough water of the Word to cause it to produce. Now, this is the analogy that, that God has given us here in the 55th chapter of Isaiah. The, the Word of God is like rain and snow that falls to the earth and forces it to produce. There's hope for you. If you have the Word of God in you, the good seed of the Word of God, then it'll produce in your life. Now, this is the dominion principle. That's what we're talking about, the dominion principle. And, and you'll notice that the... The soil does not have dominion over the seed. The seed always has dominion over the soil. In other words, when I was farming and I planted cotton or I planted soybeans or wheat, the, the soil could not say, well, now I'll tell you what, we're not going to raise soybeans this year. We're going to raise wheat or cucumbers or bananas or something else. No, it can't do that. There's a law of God that says everything produces after its kind. It's the law of Genesis. Everything produces after its kind. The seed is in itself. And God's Word is the seed for what you need. I mean, this book is full of them, the promises of God, and it is the seed for what you need. Now, you may even know about it. You may know what the Word said, but maybe you don't understand all you know about it. Therefore, you don't have enough understanding of it to get it to work for you because somebody will come along and talk you out of it and say, well, no, it wouldn't work that way. I know Brother So-and-So, and he tried that and he failed. Well, I'm sorry about Brother So-and-So, but, but if you have the saw, <laughs> that your heart is a saw, and the Word of God is the dominion factor. And as rain and snow comes from heaven, the Word of God comes from God, and it will accomplish that whereunto He has sent it. Now, I want to read it again. I want to read this again. For the, as rain cometh down, and snow from heaven, returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, maketh it to bring forth, and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. Now, let's stop and talk about that just a minute. It shall not return to God void. Now, what do you mean won't return to God void? He says, my word won't come back to me without accomplishing what it was sent to do. Well, now, how's that word going to come back to him? <laughs> now, we get into something that, that, that gets right down where we live. Who returns God's word to him? See, when you confess the Word of God, that's what you're doing. You're returning God's Word to Him. He said, call me to remembrance of what I said. Call me to remembrance. Well, does that mean that God's forgetful and He's forgot what He said? No, no, it doesn't mean that at all. What it means is that He wants you to remind Him of it because when you remind Him of it, you have to get it in your mouth and speak it. When you speak it, it gets in your heart. In other words, your heart is the soil that will produce exactly what the Word said. The promise of God will come into fruition in your life. The promises of God of the new covenant based on the authority of the Word of God is what has already been given to you. Second Peter chapter 1 tells us that God has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In other words, God's already provided it. It's already belongs to us. And somebody said, well, if it belongs to me, why don't I have it? Have you ever called for it? Have you ever reminded God of what he said in his word? Well, sometimes we forget <laughs> that, that we should put the word of God in our mouth and, and go before God. And, and when you're praying, 
find the scripture for what you prayed about and say, now, Father, here's what you said in your word. I'm returning your word to me, to you, and you said it would not return unto you void. You said, give and it shall be given. You said, ask and you shall receive. You said, seek and you shall find. And I'm reminding you of what you said. And I'm reminding you, Jesus, of what you said. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will, and it shall be done. Now, he said, it shall not return to you void. It shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Now, that gives us the basis for what, what Jesus taught in Mark, the fourth chapter. Now, remember, Jesus said, uh, I, I speak only that thing, those things which I hear my father say. In other words, he had heard this from his father. That's the reason he's teaching it in Mark, the fourth chapter. Now, you, you all know this as well as I do, the parable of the sower. He says, it came to pass that a sower sowed and then by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured it up. And you know the story of it. We're going to pick up on you know, verse 14. Jesus says, the sower soweth the word. Well, back up. We need to back up and talk about this just a little bit more. In verse 11, Jesus said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Now, he's about to unveil the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Now, what parable is that? The parable of the sower, right here. The sower soweth the word. So we know we're talking about the word of God that's sown. And he said, that seeing they see, well, let's, let's read verse 11 again. And he said unto them, uh, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they see, they may see and not perceive, hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Now, what he's talking about here is some of the previous verses that where he said, uh, talked about sowing seed on thorny ground, wouldn't produce, the thorns would choke it. In other words, if they had thorns in their heart, it chokes out the Word of God. But the important thing, you need to know that if you sow the Word of God and keep sowing the seed of the Word of God in the heart, it'll eventually choke out the thorns. Now, let's come down to verse, uh, he says, verse 13, he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? In other words, this is the granddaddy of all parables concerning the kingdom of God. It reveals revelation that will help you understand how to operate in the principles of the kingdom. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. When they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown in their heart. Now, notice, sown in their heart. So the soil here is the heart of man. That is the thing that I want to drive home to you because in this parable, he gives you the things that will keep it from producing in your life. In other words, if you don't understand it, Satan will steal it from you. And some well-meaning Christian may even talk you out of it. Now, we're going to come back and talk about this a little further in depth there, but I want to get into this other part before we end this broadcast because this is the real meat of it. And Jesus is talking about sowing a seed and reaping a harvest. Then in verse 26, he said, So is the kingdom of God as if a man cast a seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, and he knoweth not how. You may not understand all you know about it, but if you'll do what the Word said, it'll work for you. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear. Now, he said the kingdom of God's if a man cast a seed into the ground. The seed is the dominion principle. Now, now, I want to get that fastened in your mind. The seed has dominion over the soil. The soil does not have dominion over the seed. When you plant a seed, that seed demands of the soil to produce exactly what you planted. You cannot plant uh, cotton and expect corn or soybeans or wheat to come up. It produces after its kind. So the soil cannot say, no, we want to raise soybeans this year. We want to raise cucumbers or bananas. No, 
It cannot do that. There's a dominion principle that says that everything produces after its kind. The seed has dominion over the soil. So when you plant a seed, it demands of the soil to find the nutrients necessary to produce that plant. Now, how does it do that? I don't know. I don't understand all about it, but I know that it's the dominion principle. In other words, certain plants take different things from the soil. Some will take a lot of phosphate from the soil, some a lot of potash, some will take a lot of nitrogen from the soil. Some don't need potash or, nitri or, or uh, phosphate, only need nitrogen. How does the soil know what to bring to that seed? That seed demands of the soil all that's needed to cause that to produce exactly what was planted. The DNA is in that seed. The genes are in that seed. Now, you can say it several different ways. I'm going to say it so many ways you'll get it. The DNA of God is in that seed, and it has dominion over the soil. The soil cannot decide, no, we're not going to raise that. We're going to raise something else. Mm -mm. Can't do that. Now, what I'm pointing at or driving at this point, the Word of God is the incorruptible seed. When you speak the Word of God, proclaim the Word of God, that's the way you plant a seed. It says the kingdom of God is if a man cast a seed into the ground. In Luke 17, Jesus said, if you had faith as a seed, a mustard seed, you would say. Now, that's the way you plant the seed is by saying. And when you plant the seed, it makes a demand on the soil. Now, remember, the soil here is talking about the heart of man. It is a parable revealing that the heart of man is like soil. It's like the ground. It will produce whatever you plant in it. Now, when you plant a seed in the ground, it has demanded that it produce exactly what was planted. When you take the seed of God's Word, His promise, and proclaim that and say it and speak it, you plant that seed down here. Now, the Apostle Paul said in Romans 10, the Word is nigh thee, it is even in thy mouth and in thy heart. In other words, Paul tapped into it. That's, that's the way you plant the seed. You get it in your mouth and you plant it in your heart, and it's talking about the core of your being. It becomes a part of you. That's why Jesus said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Ask what you will, say what you will, pray what you will, and it shall be done. Because it demands that that need be met. That word, if it abides in you, makes a demand on your spirit to find a way to cause it to come to pass. Just the way that that seed makes a demand on the ground, the natural earth, to find a way to cause it to produce a uh, apple tree or an orange tree or a lemon tree, whatever, it has to produce what that seed demands. It has no choice. Now, you know, Jesus said it this way. He said, Not that that goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth defileth the man. In other words, what you speak out of your mouth has a lot more effect on you than what you put in your mouth. I mean, talking about eating food was, was the context of what he's talking about. They had been eating without washing their hands, and that's a big deal, you know. But uh, he said, it's not that that goeth into the mouth that defileth the man, it's that that comes out of the mouth that defiles the man. In other words, you can sow bad seed with your mouth. You can say things that are contrary to the Word of God. Well, you know, I, I can already see that it looks like this is not going to work. Well, you speak those things and you give birth to them. Those are seeds you're sowing. Have you ever heard somebody say, well, I can already see this is not going to work. They've already got the image of it. They're going to live out the reality of that image. But this parable gives us insight into how to operate in the principles of the kingdom. It's called the dominion principle. The seed of God's Word always has dominion over the soil, and it demands that whatever is needed to solve that situation and to cause that exact thing to come forth, see to it that it gets it 
and get it to you, get you in the right place at the right time to meet the right people to cause the promise of God of abundance to come to you. If you're confessing, I have abundance, no lack. My God has met my need according to his riches in glory because I've given, it's given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men given to my bosom. Thank God I have abundance, no lack. And the Lord is my shepherd and I do not want. Hallelujah. I don't know whether I've helped you or not, but I talk myself happy. And we're about out of time. Uh, before we leave the broadcast, offer number 2237 is the Dominion Principle. Two audio cassettes, two audio cassettes for $12 called the Dominion Principle. Now, we've just touched on some of it here. We're going to probably teach on it a little more, but you ought to have this set of tapes. When you understand how to operate in the principles of the kingdom, how that the words you speak out of your mouth make demand on your heart and causes you to be in the right place or the wrong place. You can be in the right place at the right time or you can be in the wrong place at the wrong time and, and the curses come or you can be in the right place and the blessings come. The seed determines where you will be. What seeds have you been planting? What have you been saying about your future? I'll tell you something about words you speak. They get to the future before you do and make prepare the way for you. What are your words preparing for you? Have you been saying what God said in His Word? Or have you been saying what the devil said or what your carnal mind said or what it looks like? I'm telling you, folks, this is important business. That's offer number 2237 two audio cassettes in an album for $12. It's called The Dominion Principle. When I got a hold of this principle, I, it changed my life, and I believe it'll change your life. You, you, when you do what the Word said, you have put the, de the demand back on God. Now, God said, as, as the rain comes down and snow from heaven, so shall my Word be. You can put that right back on God. Now, here's what you said. I put this back on you, and I'm doing what you said. Uh, the Dominion Principle. I'll tell you, I'm excited about it. Offer number 2237, two audio cassettes for $12 called The Dominion Principle. Have toll-free auto line 1-877-396-9400. That's 1-877-396-9400. Until next time, this is Charles Kapp reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and yes, Jesus is coming soon. you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. To order the product offered on today's program, call 1-877-396-9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area.